Are you serious? Are you serious? Now, seriously, get some coffee and calm down. Because, I don't know, it could happen. It could happen. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. That might be the situation here because President Donald Trump and uh, the dictator of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, may meet. They may have a face-to-face -face meeting. Trump has proposed it. It's on the table. Well, in one corner, the unpredictable dictator, the third-generation family ruler whose nation had a seven-decade reputation of being erratic, quick to take umbrage, insistent that it is powerful enough to upend the planet. And in the other corner, the sandpaper tongue American president like none other, barely passed his first 100 days as the leader of the free world. Liable to say just about anything, Trump would, <laughs> including a lot of different uh, possibilities, and he may make any time unexpected moves. But that's part of the persona of President Donald Trump, to keep the swamp off balance, to keep world leaders off balance. If you're going to reform a corrupt system, you don't conform to the system. You transform it. And if, you, if I'm telling you folks, if you go to the book of Isaiah 45, Trump literally is like reading King Cyrus in the Bible is like reading Donald Trump. Now we know what he did. Unpredictably with the Chinese president sitting with him at dinner in Mar Mar Largo, Trump fired 59 Tomahawk missiles into Syria to send a message to, the, to everybody that he will hit you if you get out of line. And using chemical weapons upon these small children and people was too much. It was, it, it, he did give them a chance. He let the Russians know in advance, but he still did it while staring at the president of China over dinner. Trump then dropped the mother of all bombs on the head of ISIS, destroying their underground operation in Afghanistan to send another message, not afraid to use a powerful weapon on you and to keep a promise. That promise is very simply this. ISIS needs to be eradicated from the face of the earth. One way to do it is to use a powerful weapon. But there's more on the table with King Cyrus. And if you'll go with me to the book of Isaiah, I think it's time to read it. I wasn't going to do this. I was actually reading the article from um, Yahoo News, and it just came to me. Those guys, their analyzation is weak. Let me give you an analyzation that is prophetic. All right. Now, I remember last June, I predicted that Trump would win the election and that the British would exit the United Kingdom. And so did Avi Lipkin. And we were actually doing a television show together. And we both made that prediction in June while sitting in Jerusalem. But we weren't the only ones. There were other people. But uh, I remember in May of last year, sitting and having dinner with Russ Dizdar. And I asked him a simple question. What do you think about Trump? What's the story? He, he laughed and then said he has like the spirit of King Cyrus upon him. Well, Let's go see who Cyrus was. If you go to Isaiah 45, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus. So Cyrus is called anointed, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two levied gates, and the gate shall not be shut. So God is saying to, that he has anointed King Cyrus, put him in position, has him in his right hand, and will use him to subdue nations. Trump is already doing this. He's already doing it. He, he, he subdued the Chinese while smacking the uh, Syrian airspace and backing off the Russians. He then dropped the mother of all bombs on the Middle East uh, to send a message to ISIS and anyone else. And he's staring down North Korea, sending an a armada 
of battleships and nuclear submarines. And he's bringing with him the Japanese and the British and the French. And he's got the Russians and the Chinese pulled up to the table. People who think this is an radical move or think that this is just a, uh, that he's just uh, unpredictable. That's right. He is subduing nations. But when he subdues nations, you can unarm them, disarm them. When kings go to battle, they gird up their loins. That's, to, that's a belt with their weapons on it. Pull up the straps so they don't trip over their own clothes and go into battle. But when the kings loose their loins, it means there's no need. The threat of war has been subsided and there is some type of resolution. So he will have power to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two levied gates. Uh, in other words, a meeting with Kim Jong-un, folks, is not out of the realm of possibility. He's already met with China and smacked an enemy while staring at China across the table. He will meet with Putin. He's willing to meet with anybody. The levy gates are opening. And then verse 2, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight and I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Now this is what he's dealing with in Washington. The crooked places. But God said, I'll go ahead of you. And what he's doing with Trump is he's going ahead of Trump and he's going to make those crooked places straight. It's, it's, it's ugly, but he's doing it. Verse 3, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness. That means take from those who wickedly possess it. I will take, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. And thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Now, if you study the rest of King Cyrus, you will know that he gets the children of Israel released from the Babylonian Empire, he allows them to go back home after they had been in bondage 70 years, and he helps them rebuild the temple, remodel it, get it back up and going. Trump is going to Israel on Jerusalem Day, on the Jubilee Jerusalem, the 50th anniversary of its reunification. Some say he's going to declare it is the city, it is the capital of Israel. Others say he's going to announce he's moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem to signify it. And some say he's going to do both. Well, no question, he is in the process of fulfilling a prophecy. It's almost a mirror image. It's unbelievable. Oh, and by the way, it's Isaiah 45, and he is president number 45. Are you serious, King Cyrus? the anointed. Let's just keep our eyes open. See how this thing plays out. Don't be shocked. Study the scriptures. Are you saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ and pray for the president of the United States. And guess guess what? I would like to see a Donald Trump, Kim Jong-un meeting because if they're sitting at the table talking, they're not having their fingers on the green button. 